everyone. Welcome back to The Coop with Meyer Hatchery, where we talk all things poultry in hopes of educating chicken keepers and inspiring future flock owners. I'm Tessa. And I'm Jeff. And today we are talking hatching your own chicks. Now, before we get started, don't forget that you can save $5 off your next Meyer Hatchery purchase by entering the coupon code THECOOP2022 at checkout. So tell me, Jeff, have you ever hatched your own chicks? No, I have never gone broody. Doesn't seem <laughs> bad, though. <laughs> oh, my God. That is not what I meant. Uh, I meant, have you ever taken hatching eggs and set them in an incubator or under one of your broody hens to hatch? Ah, uh, that makes more sense. <laughs> yes, I have incubated eggs before. Good. I don't want to worry if I see an order for you of hatching eggs. Uh, it would be hard to work while sitting on those eggs, I think. So let's leave it to the birds. Incubating eggs in an incubator as opposed to hatching under a broody hen has some benefits. So let's talk about different incubators and how to choose your hatching eggs. I think the number one thing that first time hatchers should know is that incubating your chicks at home, regardless if they're in an incubator or under your hen, they will give you straight run chicks. And what are straight run chicks? Well, they are males and females, pullets and cockerels. So make sure you have a plan for every potential egg you hatch. That is such good advice, Jeff. The first time one of my broodies hatched out her own chicks, over half were males. And they were ornamental, so it's not even like I could use them for dual purpose. It's good to have a plan in place for every egg to be a responsible hatcher. So what types of eggs have you hatched before? Oh, well, well, let's see. We, we did chickens. We did bantams. We did ducks. We did call ducks. We did, what else? In 20 years of hatching, we did a lot of different things. So we did a lot. Um, yeah. And it's a lot of fun, too. That's awesome. I have only done chickens and quail. And I think that's it. Yeah, just chickens and quail. Um, I have done them in the past. I have some quail in the incubator right now. It's nice to practice with your barnyard eggs on your first hatch to make sure you know your incubator. Imagine that, getting to know your machine. It's the difference between a good hatch and a bad hatch, though. And you wouldn't buy a new oven and use it for the first time to, bit, to bake your wedding cake. You had practice first, and there's no difference with an incubator. You can even set it up and monitor it without eggs inside, calibrating the temperature and humidity, which are key to a very good hatch. Now, I know you have used large capacity cabinet incubators, mm -hmm. but I use smaller plastic and styrofoam ones. So I bought external thermometers and hydrometers that I use throughout incubation so I can monitor the consistency. And you know what? Actually, today, when I went to my um, when I went out to my incubator, I had accidentally put a real mercury thermometer <laughs> in there and it had gotten squished in between the turners. So beware, do not leave it in. Um, but these kind of things help me determine where in my house is best to put the incubator. Because in my living room, the sunlight coming through the window was so hot that it was cooking one entire section of my first batch of eggs. And now right. I found a great place that isn't near any doors. There's no draft. There's no vents. There's no windows with direct sunlight. And since I started monitoring the temperatures and the humidity with a secondary unit inside, my hatches have been so much better. What's it like yeah, in a cabinet? Right. It is so important where you put your incubator. Um, and we found that out also where, <laughs> like you said, one room is different than another room. You got to find out what's the best room to put your incubator in. Mm -hmm. So with a cabinet incubator, do you have to buy those external pieces or are they just part of the machine? Part of the machine. Oh, see, that's perfect. That's awesome. And you know, I really like that because we farmers, homesteaders, we are so busy. I am all for using technology to make it easier. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. So how did you choose the best incubator for you? And does it matter what kind of eggs you're going to hatch? Is one incubator better than others for different types of poultry? All questions we want to know. All right. So I don't necessarily think so. I don't think there's one certain incubator that's going to fit everyone's needs. 
It's what works for you and your situation. Like I wouldn't run out and buy a cabinet incubator if I knew that I couldn't expand my coop and I am maxed out at 10 birds. There's just no point. I also didn't spend much money on my first incubator because they're not cheap. And with live chicks being so easily available to ship safely and quickly through Meyer, it's not something I needed, just something I wanted. For me, it's about being a part of the bigger picture. Incubating with an incubator is beneficial to those who don't have a safe place for their hens to brood for the full 21 days, or if they've purchased hatching eggs that are valuable to them. I don't like giving broody hens eggs that I've purchased because <laughs> I have an egg eater out in the coop. And if my broody gets up for too long, then her eggs are fair game. And actually, I found them this morning like that. So, you know, I really just like watching the miracle of the chicks hatching. The first thing that my chicks see are my huge face pressed up against the viewing window. <laughs> and that must be comforting to them, right? Yeah, I sure think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's really comforting. Uh, not scary at all to see this face looking down. <laughs> I agree with you though. Um, so we personally, my wife and I, we started off with a styrofoam incubator, one, then it became two, then it became three, <laughs> then um, as a dual Christmas present, uh, because the wife wanted it we got a cabinet um nice and it's an investment it's not no cabinet is not an it's an investment the cabinet is an investment Absolutely. and you got it like tessa said you got to look at your situation if you got a coop for 10 cabinet doesn't make sense yep, yep. Uh, but we lived in the country we had the room uh the wife wanted to get into it big time so we got a cabinet Yep. Um, sort of like we did the dishes, we got a cabinet. Um, <laughs> and it was used for yeah. us and it made a difference. And um, with a cabinet, there are ways at, at niche farming that you can easily make the money back. Yes. I think that's important too. I think I'm going to start consulting you for all of my investment needs, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> at, with, with the cabinet incubators, they, they really are an investment because if you are having specialty chicks hatched out and you need the big capacity and you're buying, you know, each styrofoam incubator one at a time, you've got them set up, they take over half your house and it does make sense. Um, with our new Guinea bantam and quail hatching eggs, I might not have anything left to invest in after this hatch along is over because I will be broke. But the hatch along is such a fun event. Yes, the hatch along is one of the best events we do here at Meyer Hatchery. It's the perfect opportunity for everyone to have some fun, hatch new chicks, and learn something in the process. Yeah, and I I don't know about you, but for myself, I learn something new in every hatch. Like today with the with that thermometer, I had no idea that it could slip between the turners and my styrofoam. Um, and that's an important part of my my whole setup. So my favorite way to hatch right now is doing half in uh, the incubator and then moving them out to the broody when I would normally lock down. And last fall, some of my smaller bodied hens were not big enough to like lay across all of their eggs. And temperature wise, they were losing them. They were rotting. Um, so I started giving them these fake eggs and they thought they were sitting. And then all of a sudden I could just slip in these new ones that were already ready to hatch. And they felt like they did the whole process. They were successful mothers. I don't have to worry about another hen stealing the nest. They get eggs that I know are on the path to hatching and then they do the rest. <laughs> now that's teamwork. <laughs> uh, letting a broody hen raise chicks is by far the easiest way to care for them. I think that knowing your options, doing your research, reaching out when you need help are the key things for a successful hatch. And don't be afraid to reach out. Join Maya Hatchery on the fall hatch along on our main webpage, there's a link for it, and see how wonderful it can be to hatch at home. That's awesome. And with that, we thank you for listening to The Coop. Be sure to subscribe, and if you'd be so kind, drop us a review. Do you have a poultry-related question or topic you would like us 
Tessa and I, me, Jeff, to cover. We would love to hear from you. Send us an email to podcast at meyerhatchery.com. 